Afloat with Henry Morgan. Afloat with Henry Morgan, written for radio by Warren Barry and a George Edwards production. Diaz recognizes Dolores, and unless she pays him blackmail, threatens to expose her. Dolores confesses to him the reason she is on the island and induces him with promises of great reward to help her regain the Aztec necklet. After talking with Diaz, Dolores realizes she must make friends with Jeffrey Hunter. That evening, after Diaz had seen Morgan and had regained his berth aboard the Flying Gull, she visits Morgan and Hunter, asking them to dinner. Hunter refuses, and she asks him to accompany her to her carriage. Suddenly, she clutches his arm, saying she has twisted her ankle and he will have to carry her. Oh, it is so stupid of me. Just when I was saying how easily I could do it. Is it very painful? Oh, what a silly thing to say. Oh, uh, come, Mr. Hunter, pick me up. I am quite light. There is nothing for you to be afraid of. Uh, no, no, of course not, mademoiselle. I seem to have lost all my manners since becoming a buccaneer. Oh, oh. You are very strong, Mr. Hunter. And you're very light. Just where is your carriage? On the key. It is not far. Oh, I am so ashamed. I have made such a fool of myself. You couldn't help it, mademoiselle. It was an accident. We should keep the flying gull in more shipshape order. But I fear I shall have to infringe still further upon your kindness. How do you mean? You have already told me that I took in coming unescorted through this part of the town. I have to face the same risk going home. And what is more... I now have a bad ankle. Oh, I, I understand, mademoiselle. Would you be so kind as to see me home? Of course, mademoiselle. If you will just put me down on the chaise long. Uh, thank you. Why, I do declare, Mr. Hunter, I found it more comfortable lying in your arms. Shall I call a servant, mademoiselle, to inform Sir Thomas of your accident? Oh, no, 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 no. Sir Thomas is out. Uh, he had to go to a tiresome meeting tonight. Is there anything I can get you before I leave? Oh, you are not thinking of going so soon. Oh, it is so early, Mr. Hunter. What would you think of my hospitality if after doing me such a great service I sent you away? It is not a case of you sending me away, mademoiselle. No, no, no. I refuse to let you go. Having got you into my home after refusing my invitation, you don't think I am going to let you get away so soon? I have a great deal to do. And you would leave me to spend a lonely night all on my own? Oh, have pity on a poor invalid. If you refuse, I shall think you a bore and no gentleman. You make it almost impossible for me to refuse. Good. Then we are friends. Uh, sit down, please. Thank you. Oh, no, 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 no. Not over there. There is room on the chaise long beside me. That's right. Um, you're finding Port Royal to your taste, mademoiselle? Oh, vastly. You must find it a great deal different from the life you led in France and England. Oh, come, come. Must we talk to each other like strangers? You are a very strange man, Mr. Hunter. Am I? Why? Why do you not want to be friends with me? Can a buccaneer friend to the lady of quality? Oh, you are no real buccaneer. You are a gentleman. Why were you so rude to me when I was aboard the flying gull? Mademoiselle, you're embarrassing me. Oh, I don't want to do that, but aboard the flying gull, I knew that you were the only man that I could give my friendship to. I, I tried to talk to you, but you were rude. I didn't intend to be rude, but my life isn't your life, mademoiselle. But my life is perhaps a life which you have lost. You're full of understanding. Tell me about that life. I would like to hear it. It is something which I must forget. What are you doing out here in Jamaica? Mademoiselle, as far as I am concerned, my life began just a few short weeks ago when I met Captain Morgan. Why are you frightened of me? Why do you spurn my every offer of friendship? You are being very kind. Because you wrongly feel that you're under an obligation to me for bringing you oh, home. Oh, no, 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 no. You mistake my meaning. I really feel I want to be a friend of yours. I am on it. I didn't want to appear rude, but it's also impossible. I believe you need a friend. You are a very lonely man, Mr. Hunter. I can tell by looking at you that your place is in these surroundings. You have come from a fine home. Have you not? If you only knew what painful memories you're bringing back. 
I am doing so on purpose because I know you want a friend. A friend who leaves the sort of life which you have lost. But I have cut myself off from that sort of life. I will pry and try to find out why you have done such a thing. Perhaps it is through no reason of your own. Perhaps it is because of a great disappointment. Maybe some woman. I will never ask you the reason. I just have the feeling that I could be a very good friend of yours. You're being very kind. I am being very selfish. Shall I tell you why? Because I like you. Because I would like to share with you secrets which I might have. Would you like to share those secrets with me? To come and talk with a woman like you. A woman who can understand the way I think, the way I talk, would be wonderful. Then it is a fact between us. We will be friends? Yes, mademoiselle. Oh, but first of all, we must not be so formal. Would it be hard for you to call me Antoinette? No. And I? What shall I call you? I only know you as Mr. Hunter. Jeffrey. Jeffrey. I like that name. It is a good, strong name. Are you not glad I persuaded you to stay? I'm very glad, Antoinette. I know I have missed talking to a person like you more than anything else. Ah, then I have brought you a little bit of happiness. Oh, I'm so pleased. Now you will come again. You will not regret making our decision to be friends. Never. You find me attractive? Most attractive. I, I think maybe that is one of the reasons why I was rude to you aboard the ship. You belong to a life which I never thought I would get a glimpse of again. And I feared you were too beautiful for me to know too well. And that is no bar to our friendship now? No. No bar at all. Because Antoinette are desperately hungry to talk to someone of my kind. It sickens me to listen to Buccaneer's talk, to listen to Morgan's boastings. Morgan? He is a boaster, eh? No, I, I don't mean that in an unkind way. It's just the life he has led. He has been kind to me and placed in me his full trust. I'm honored that he should. That is the way I like to hear you talk. You see, you are talking to me now just as though we were very good friends. And now I know you, I, I feel that we... But wait a moment. I am being so rude. Uh, we should drink to our new friendship. The goblets over there. You get them while I fetch a flagon of the sweetest wine you ever taste. Well, hold a moment, your ankle. Why, that's the quickest cure I ever saw. <laughs> oh, oh, I am foolish. I forgot and now you have found me out. You didn't <laughs> twist your ankle. <laughs> foolish man, no, of course not. I tricked you, but I am glad I did. You see, I did so want you to be friends with me, and you were so cold. Oh, forgive me. Please, say you forgive me. Yes. Yes, I forgive you. Why, why, it's Jeffrey. Hello, Kitty. Oh, it's so strange you're being around these parts. Well, that's unjust. It was only last night I didn't come to the Dolphin Tavern. Sure, and it seems like an eternity. Jeffrey, have you been missing me? What? Pleased to see you again, if that answers your question. No, not really. No, I must get about my business. I've, I've never seen such a thirsty lot of men as there are here tonight. Kitty, what's the matter with you tonight? It's like talking to a stranger. Maybe it's because I love you with everything I've got. Maybe it's because I love with a jealous love, a love which is possessive. Look, Kitty, can't you leave these men for a moment? Let's go somewhere where we can talk. And it's fine explanations you have to make, too. Come over to the storeroom. I won't be happy, Kitty, until you tell me what it is that's worrying you. Very well, Jeffrey. Come in here. Now, Kitty. Kiss me, Jeffrey, and tell me that you love me. Kitty, I... I have never told you that I loved you. I... I came to you because I was... I was desperately lonely. I wanted someone who could give me some comfort and... You gave it to me. Two nights ago, I was good enough for you to come and seek out. Two nights ago, you were talking of buying my friendship. Isn't that as good as saying you wanted me for yourself? I still want to buy your freedom and your friendship, Kitty, but... But because all my being cries out of the injustice, you're being a slave in a tavern like this at the beck and call of everyone. You were kind to me when I was in trouble. I want to repay you. You thought I was good enough until you became entangled with the fine ladies. Just what do you mean by that remark? Your own conscience should tell you what I'm saying. This Antoinette de Lacy, she's a grand lady, isn't she? And I'm just a common turn wench. I'm not good enough for the high and mighty Mr. Hunter, am I? Kitty, you've got this all wrong. And now you want to become a fine gentleman and go to Government House, rather than be seen talking to Kitty of the Dolphin Tavern. Who told you I'd been to Government House? 
Jeffrey, I'm, I'm sorry I spoke to you the way I did. Please just kiss me and tell me that what I'd been thinking of last night was all lies and, and that you're just the Jeffrey who once held me in his arms. You see, I'm crazy with jealousy for your love. Can you resist the love I'm wanting to give you? Kitty, Kitty, you're such a child. I, I want to help you so much, but I am not in love with you. I have never been in love with you. I, I never once said I was. Now, be honest. Then it was true what Diaz said. It is this Antoinette de Lacy you've given your heart to, and you think to throw me aside. Diaz told you I was with Antoinette de Lacy? Sure, he came and told me that he... He knew that you'd found a liking for, for a company. Diaz said that? Was he at the tavern last night? Yes, he was. And with his pockets full of gold, and boasting about himself, and he told me about you. I saw Diaz last night. He was aboard the Flying Gull, but he left the ship. He must have come here long before Antoinette de Lacy came aboard the ship. How did he know I would be going to Government House? A seed of suspicion is sown in Jeffrey's mind. But will he nurture it and let it grow, and so save himself from trouble? Listen to the next episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan.